last time you actually sat down and read a newspaper? More importantly, did you do it because there was literally nothing else you could do? Well, how about this? When was the last time you were just sitting at home and you turned on the radio? No, Pandora doesn't count. Spotify users, put your hands down. Yeah. Well, how about this? When's the last time you watched TV? You know TV, right? No, not really. Well, this gentleman remembers TV. This is Bud Bouchard. He's an adjunct at the University of North Texas, and he had a very unique introduction to camera work. He was working at WFA the day JFK was shot here in Dallas. Kennedy assassination was a great learning process for me. I learned how network television worked. I learned how to work in a situation like that that is very newsworthy and was being shown all over the world. Bud vividly remembers the days of tapes and reels, but not all of these memories are fond. After all, those tapes had to go somewhere. Only three shows of... That uh, entire room, all of those boxes. Yeah, all these boxes. Three uh, shows. That's three Saturdays worth of NCAA games. So, you know, you're talking analog there. Yeah. Digital, you could put all that on one of these. That said, his view of the digital age we now live and work in isn't all roses either. There's one thing too about the digital world. We're so, we're so used to using computers. It is my belief that we're overusing computers. So you lose something in the analog world, you can run in and put another tape on a machine. You can go fix something. But uh, in the case of a local television station, right before the noon news one day, their fiber optics went out. They could not do a remote. When they got into the uh, station, you found out that they could not do copy. They could not have teleprompter. Uh, they could not roll in their footage or roll in their news stories. We had 30 minutes of talking heads on the air. Because when something crashes in the computer world, it's all gone. It's, it's over. And those talking heads just can't stand up like they used to, not in an age where content is everywhere. And every talking head, from a network anchor to some crackpot with a camcorder, looks the same on the internet. And that viewing is more important than ever, as our TVs are being replaced by our smartphones. One third of users would rather give up TV than give up their phones. And it's little wonder, what with interactive viewing and ease of access, that most users watch video on their smartphone. More importantly, one quarter of users watch video on their phones every single day. But you shouldn't abandon your TV quite yet. That's just the next frontier of the revolution. Or so some think. I think that the Apple television, not to be confused with the box Apple TV, but the Apple television, whatever they call it, will probably be a large scale 4K media changing experience. That's what they go for and that's why I like them because when they come up with something new, it's awesome and it shapes the entire field. They've been ahead of people. Um, they, they've been able to see where, where trends are going mm -hmm. and shape the field. They shaped the field with the iPhone. They shaped the field with the iPad. They have shaped the field with, and they haven't gotten a lot of credit for this, but they've shaped the field with resolution on screens because without the retina displays, true HD phones wouldn't exist. And with those HD phones and access to boundless information at our fingertips, or at a simple voice command, our phones are rapidly becoming the most influential computer in our lives. And they're also something of a fashion statement. Let me, let me do pre preface this. Microsoft is doing a lot of good things. I really like the direction Microsoft is going. I have Microsoft products. You won't catch me dead with a Microsoft phone. <laughs> Yeah. because no apps. Indeed, Windows phones had a rather late coming to the smartphone party, and while they have the best cameras, has that helped them make up lost market share? Quick show of hands. How many of you have an Apple phone? And how many of you have an Android phone? Nope. Well, how often are they using these popular smartphones? <laughs> Four? <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna say 100. <laughs> yeah. Goodness. 
Fashion statement might have been the wrong phrase. Smartphones are more than a shiny accessory. They've become an extension of ourselves, a body part that connects us to the internet. And like any other body part, we can't seem to part ourselves from it. That's why, more often than not, our cell phones are the last thing we touch at night. And they become the first things we touch in the morning. We wake up, check Facebook, check weather, and maybe wake up with a round of Angry Birds. As it stands, more than three quarters of us use our phones in bed. That's not quite as bad as when we roll out of bed and off to brunch with friends. More than half of us feel the need to check our phones while out eating with friends or family. One third of smartphone owners can't even go to the bathroom without using them. But worst of all, one fifth of drivers admit to texting while they're on the road. That could be a problem, right bud? You guys are addicted to those phones. I heard a, a, on the news this morning they were doing a little special that said the average student, if allowed to have the cell phones on in a classroom, checks the text messages 11 times during a class. That is the average. That sounds low. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, they check emails and, and everything else. What, what is so important? Good question. Let's ask. What are you using your phones for so much? Texting. Yeah. Media. Texting. Definitely. Texting. Yeah. Entertainment. Entertainment. No wonder you don't answer my text. Can I say all the above? <laughs> well, texting aside, there may be a deeper reason behind our inability to put our phones away. Because everything that I need to do is somehow run through my phone, whether it's scheduling or, you know, personal stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I read my Bible so much on the app that's on there. Uh, internet's on there. Uh, email is work. It, email's on there. Mm -hmm. um, any notes that I jot down. It's, everything is connected to the little black box. Indeed, that little black box holds our lives. Cloud computing means you can reach your data everywhere as mobile computing continues to improve our, improve our productivity and let us work anywhere. It also holds our addictive distractions and games. But with our phones doing so much, is there room left in our hearts for another device? What would users pick as their one true love? Smartphone. Smartphone. Mm. Mm. Uh, Tough smartphone. Call. I, I don't know because I've never had a tablet. Same here. So uh, I don't know. Probably go with tablet because it makes the Netflix much better. Nexus 7? I can't Nexus pick. 7. I'm, I'm just going to keep them both. <laughs> <laughs> and the left. <laughs> Indeed, that seems a popular choice. As technology expands, we're expanding our lives and our wallets for it. And companies are taking notice. It's not just desktops, phones, and laptops anymore. It's watch with displays. It's thermostats with displays. Maybe a car console has a display, and maybe something like Google Glass. When you look at all these computing devices, it's a multi-screen world. Yes, our screens are multiplying and finding ways into every corner of our lives. But that may not be such a bad thing. You don't see as much graffiti on the wall anymore, because I guess people are texting it up instead of writing it up there with a Sharpie. <laughs> so. You are a much stronger person than I am. I pay for apps all the time. That, that mostly is just like get unlock features. My Asian blood will not allow me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel like that can go on the video. <laughs> Put it on the video. <laughs> My Asian right. blood forbids me.